They are the cutest puppies, reared for slaughter. Kept in bleak cages, open below so the waste falls and stays. This industry has hidden up lanes, but it's an industry under pressure. There's deep distaste for dog farming in the West, and tastes are changing in Asia. Kim Soo Gyun showed me round his farm. When his restaurant business failed, he was already breeding dogs and saw a way of making money by farming them for food. I used to breed dogs, and when my other business became less successful, I just expanded dog breeding until it's what you see now on this farm. Koreans eat food which suits Koreans. Our food cultures are different. But enter salvation. Lola Webb is on a mission to shut down the industry. She negotiates with farmers, presenting alternative business plans <laughs> and some cash to help them transition to other produce like growing peppers or fruit. For her, it's a labor of love. Every farm sparks compassion. <laughs> Every dog farm we go to, every market we go to, despite everything these dogs have been through, having known nothing but brutality throughout their lives and an absolute indifference to the fact that they're sentient beings, they all come to the cages, licking your hand, waiting for that opportunity for reprieve. And reprieved they are. Mr. Kim has agreed to give up dog farming. A hundred of his dogs are being inoculated so they can be taken out of the country to new homes in California. It is a successful rescue, a happy ending. How could you eat him? How could you eat this beautiful dog? But you know, if you look into the face of a cow or a lamb, you'd think just the same. But in the West, we have no problem with cows or lambs but we do with him. At the Moran dog market in Seoul, they're sick of protesters from the West. This trader showed me round. For many Asians, he said, eating dog is a tradition going back centuries. People here believe dog stew has tonic, medicinal properties. If we had financial support, he says, we would flatten this dog market and turn this whole area into a centre that sells dogs as pets. We've been wanting this for a long time, but we have to make a living. This area is being redeveloped and the market sticks out among the modern high-rise offices and stores. But it keeps going because there's a demand for what it sells. So this is a traditional Korean market with also Lola Weber gave me a different, darker view of the market. She and her fellow campaigners have secretly filmed the trade there and sometimes been attacked by traders. Her argument is twofold. Eating dogs is wrong and there's no humane way of slaughtering them. A lot of these dogs aren't being slaughtered in slaughterhouses, it's, it's in the market. So obviously you've got concerns for, for hygiene and, and human health dogs shouldn't be killed in front of other dogs. This clearly happens routinely, so that's obviously incredibly distressing for these animals. And again, it can take, because it's not a proper slaughterhouse, it can take these dogs a long time to die. And so, whilst the first applications of electrocution might paralyse the dog, it takes repeated applications before the dog dies. But people eat meat. They not do. everybody, but people eat meat and meat means slaughter. It absolutely does and by campaigning against the dog meat industry I'm no more condoning any other form of animal slaughter. <laughs> this is the Trash Club, a bunch of macho middle-class lads in their 30s clinging to long-gone youth. As part of this male bonding they used to eat dog but not anymore. Now it's blowfish, also macho because it's poisonous if not prepared right. But the days of dog as the big male meal have gone. 
times are changing. Uh, a few years ago, you know, I enjoyed eating dog meat for my health, but I heard there are many problems in the slaughtering process and sanitation. So uh, recently, I rarely eat dog meat. So I was quite happy today when we decided to eat fish. The number of restaurants in Seoul serving dog has halved in recent years, from 1,500 to 700. Prosperous people eat out more, but not so much the old recipes from the poverty-stricken past. Today's career has the trappings of affluence, like dog shows, which are all the rage now. Rising Korean incomes mean more people see dogs as pets, and not plate fillers. This change in tastes puts dog farmers under economic pressure. The farmer on this farm has chosen to leave the industry. Earlier today, the rescue of his dog started. These dogs are now on their way to new homes in America, starting with a ride in a pet box on a truck and then a flight across the Pacific. The farmer leaves the business, the lives of his dogs will be transformed. They will become pets, not a product doomed for sale at a meat market. Sometimes I dream of living forever, to never die, not unless I wanted to. Actually, I dream I could just know everything, to have super intelligence, super strength for that matter, and super speed. All my life, I want to know my family. We haven't seen each other for 70 years. I didn't know I had a twin brother. All the years was lost and I kind of give up hope. In my heart, I always had a feeling that I did have a twin brother. And for 70 years, I left with, I live with unknown things. <laughs>